My name is Morgan Goldsmith. I'm the Director of Clinical Services for Hospice Corporation with the Macy Catheter. Uh, I'm one of the RNs on the team uh, and really excited to be able to present the Macy Catheter Refresher Training for you all today. Uh, we uh, had over 80 different individuals from different agencies across the United States re register for this event. So thank you all for taking the time to join. Uh, we feel very honored to have you all here today. Uh, the different, one of the things I like to do in the beginning is just share some of the states that are represented. So from the Southeast, we have Florida and Georgia, and North Carolina, South Carolina, and Illinois, and Ohio. I'm actually presenting from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, as we speak. Um, and then from the West Coast, we've got California, Arizona, Oregon, uh, Idaho, and then uh, Louisiana and Texas are also on the call today. So again, thank you all for joining. Uh, we're really excited to be able to share this information uh, on the Macy catheter. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you that don't know uh, Brad's story, Brad is our uh, inventor of the Macy catheter and president of Hospice Corporation. But most importantly, he's uh, a hospice nurse. He worked in hospice for over 20 years. And in fact, uh, when I started with the company two years ago, was still working full time uh, for Kaiser in Northern, Car in Northern California as a after hours and weekends nurse. Uh, he came up with the idea and concept for the catheter to fill a need that he found in symptom management. We'll get into the details of that in a moment. Uh, but he worked to develop the product, started Hospi Corporation with our uh, CEO, Egal Ladebaum, in 2012, and then received FDA uh, clearance uh, for the Macy catheter in 2014. We're very proud to share that we've had some recent publications uh, in the Journal of Hospice of Palliative Nursing, as well as the Journal of Pain and Symptom Management listed here. Uh, if you're interested at all in receiving copies of these, please feel free to reach out to our team. Um, they're available online, and we also have copies that we'd be more than happy to share with you. Okay, so some of the symptom management challenges that Brad found uh, in his practice occurred frequently with a subset of his patients as they transitioned. Uh, frequently, uh, he would run into situations where it was in the middle of the night and a patient would start to lose the ability to swallow. In order to be able to continue their care and manage their symptoms effectively, he ran into um, problems with being able to quickly and effectively get uh, whether it was alternative therapy such as IV therapy or maybe a compounded suppository, all of that took a lot of time to be delivered to the home. So he wanted to come up with a, a product and a solution to be able to use medications that were already available to be able to continue uh, symptom management in the home or in the setting of the, the patient's choice. One night in particular, he was taking care of a patient in terminal agitation. Uh, and this patient had lost the ability to swallow. He only had a tablet of phenobarbital available to him. Uh, so he decided the patient couldn't swallow. He didn't have any other options. So he gave that tablet rectally. Unfortunately, after an hour, the patient was still in distress. So instead of giving uh, a second tablet, um, he went ahead and, and crushed a, a second, or excuse me, instead of giving a second tablet just rectally, uh, he went and crushed the um, second tablet of phenobarbital, mixed it with water, and then administered it through a catheter uh, in a solution form. And the patient was resting comfortably within 15 minutes. And it was that that really started the idea and concept behind, okay, there's something here and there's a, a solution for our you know, clinicians to be able to help manage symptoms in the home. And that's where the concept of the Macy catheter uh, originated. So just some general information if you're new or if you're maybe attending this training as a refresher. Uh, we received our FDA indication in 2014, and it's simply that the Macy catheter uh, provides rectal access to administer liquids and, and medications. As you can see here, and hopefully you can see uh, my mouth, the catheter sits just on the patient's leg or on the abdomen once it's been placed in the distal third of the rectum. And I'll show you um, what that looks like and why absorption works so well in a moment. Some general guidelines that are important to remember. Uh, you do need an order for uh, the Macy catheter. So similar to a Foley, you would just need an order for placement. It can remain in place for up to 28 days. 
So this is a really, really effective and quick device to place that can remain in place in the same patient for up to 28 days. Naturally, the next question will be for people who aren't as familiar with the catheter yet, will say, well, what happens if the patient has a bowel movement? And if a patient were to have a bowel movement, the catheter itself and the balloon that holds it in place is actually designed to be expelled. It's very, very soft, and it can easily come out with a bowel movement. The great, place, or the great uh, piece about that is that the rectal, um, placing the rectal catheter is a non-sterile procedure. So that same catheter, if it were expelled with a bowel movement, uh, could simply be wiped off, the balloon would need to be deflated, it could be re-lubricated, and then inserted into the rectum. Um, and again, as long as the catheter is inserted after it's expelled, it can remain in place in the same patient for up to 28 days. Uh, the product itself is completely latex-free, uh, so it's made of silicone, uh, which is another area that we get um, asked questions about frequently. But again, just to reinforce, you know, this is a very easy procedure. Uh, once I share the steps for insertion, typically the first time a, a clinician inserts the catheter, it's about five minutes, uh, and then the second time, once they're comfortable with it, it's usually three minutes or less. And we're also now very excited to announce that in addition, to clinicians inserting the catheter, family members can then be taught to insert uh, the catheter and give medications if it were to be expelled. Okay, just a little bit of background on why does rectal delivery work so well? So this picture here, you can see the Macy catheter sits just in the distal third of the rectum when it's placed. This balloon, which you inflate to 15 ml, which is cool tap water, uh, sits against the rectal sphincter, and that's how it holds uh, the catheter in place. Medication is administered through this port, which is marked as meds, and I'll show in a bigger picture here, in a solution form. So you crush up the medication, uh, if it comes in pill form, and then you add some water, create a solution, and then inject it. Once the medication is injected in the distal third of the rectum, it quickly and easily absorbs into the walls of the rectum. This tissue is lined with absorptive cells, and it's a traditionally a very, very dry area of the body, um, but it takes on fluid easily. And as you can see here, there's quite a bit of vasculature, and the venous return goes directly into the inferior vena cava. That simply just translates to a really quick onset of action and uh, a quick way for the medications to get into systemic circulation, meaning there's increased bioavailability and a great onset of action uh, for the minority of drugs that are given rectally. So here's a picture of the catheter itself. Uh, just some general information for the clinicians on the call today. Um, it is 14 French, it's made of silicone, and it's just about 21 inches in length. The catheter itself holds just under three mLs, and I'll, I'll tell you why that's important here in a moment. But here, going through the components, um, as you can see, it's labeled Macy catheter. Uh, the medication administration port is this clear port here, and you simply uh, inject medication using an enteral or oral syringe, which we provide in the kit. And then the medication doesn't come out because there's a one-way self-closing valve in here. That's just a, a nice to know um, piece. So once you insert the medication, you know it's not gonna come back out. Next is the balloon inflation port. Uh, simply uh, insert 15 ml of room temperature or cool tap water. Uh, into this port, and it actually states uh, inflate with 15 ml here in case uh, you need a reminder the first time you're using it or if you're teaching families. Uh, and from there, uh, you would just uh, place the cap back on, and the next step would be looking at the placement marker lines. Uh, here, unlike a, a Foley catheter, there's actual specific placement marker lines to make sure that the catheter is in the distal third of the rectum. And the easiest way to remember this, there's two arrows, as you can see, and a straight line. That straight line is what sits just outside the patient's body uh, when it's placed properly in the distal third of the rectum. And here you can see the uh, very soft balloon, and it's, uh, again, filled to 15 ml uh, once it's inserted into the rectum. And then there's four medication delivery holes, uh, two on either side, uh, two here, and then there's two on the opposite side. Here's a list of just common medication classifications that are given uh, via the Macy catheter with success. Uh, you know, your anti-nauseates, your benzos, um, your sedatives, there's many, many classifications that are very effective when given uh, via the Macy catheter. 
So common Macy catheter uses. Again, this is um, a device that's used for those patients whose oral route is compromised and the sublingual route is not effective anymore. So, you know, for the majority of our patients, their symptoms are well controlled through, um, throughout the time that they transition and end of life. But where the Macy catheter can really come in is for that subset of patients who, who don't um, or who are not able to take medications orally anymore. And again, that sublingual route is ineffective. Uh, so those are terminal agitation, pain, uh, those experiencing nausea and vomiting, seizures, shortness of breath and fever. Uh, those are the most common symptoms that are reported from agencies and clinicians that we support. Uh, and the Macy catheter is very effective in facilitating symptom control uh, for these particular conditions. Okay, so the Macy catheter bedside care kit. Again, for those that are new to the device, um, this is what the bedside care kit looks like. And it comes with absolutely everything that you need to be able to insert and crush up medication, insert the catheter, excuse me, and then uh, crush up medication. Here's an overview of all the different supplies that are included in the kit. Um, you have an instruction manual. Uh, this is actually written for families, so there's a lot of pictures. Um, if you forget everything that we're discussing on today's webinar, not a big deal because it's included in these kits. In fact, we have many agencies that um, if they want to start utilizing the catheter uh, and very quickly after they order and maybe there isn't enough time to get a full-blown training rolled out, frequently they'll just have their clinicians uh, read these and then um, we'll be able to, to quickly insert the catheter. This instructions for use is written for clinicians and is a little bit more technical, um, but again, it's just meant to be a resource. And then we have these medication sheets, which you can choose to use with families. It just outlines how much medication you give, how much water um, you would add to those medications, and then reminders for flushing the catheter itself. This is our liquid pill system, and this is included in the kit, and I'll show you how to use it in just a moment. But essentially, um, it's, a, it's a pill crusher that's modeled after a pepper grinder. So it pulverizes medication into a very fine powder. You're able to mix water directly in here and then quickly draw it up and give it through the uh, Macy catheter. And again, these are all the supplies required for the insertion of the catheter. So you have the catheter itself. Uh, the lore syringe, which again uh, inflates the balloon, uh, water soluble lubricant, gloves, and then the uh, attachment device, which can go again on the leg or lower abdomen. So, getting ready to insert the catheter, um, you would just want to make sure that if you haven't done a rectal exam uh, recently, you would want to make sure that you go in and just assess for stool. So it is best if the rectal vault is empty. However, form stool is absolutely not a contraindication. In fact, if you can still um, you know, pass the catheter, you will be able to uh, give medication in a solution form through the catheter, and that medication will still absorb around the stool into the rectal vault. Uh, you do want to assess for rectal lesions. Uh, so it's really important if a, a patient has rectal lesions, uh, tumors, any active rectal bleeding, if there has been any recent bowel surgery in the past six weeks, or diarrhea, those would all be contraindications and reasons why you would not want to, to utilize the, the Macy catheter. Uh, I'll pause here because there's one question that I, uh, as I'm reading this, that I frequently get asked, and that's um, about colostomies. You know, if a, a patient has uh, a colostomy, um, you know, the question will come up, can I still use the Macy catheter? And the, the Macy catheter is only indicated to be placed in the rectum. As long as a patient has an intact rectum, it can absolutely be used with that patient um, once it's inserted into the rectum, but should never be actually uh, inserted into um, an ostomy. Okay, so now we're ready for placement. Placement, again, is really, really easy, uh, and it's four simple steps. So simply uh, with the gloves that are included in the kit or your own gloves, you want to lubricate the catheter tip to oh, about the first arrow or so with water-soluble lubricant that's included in the kit. You then insert the catheter to the placement marker line, which is the line between the two arrows. Uh, and then you inflate the balloon to 15 mLs of tap water using that lower syringe included in the kit. And then once it's in place, you simply want to do a light tug, similar to if you were placing a Foley, just to make sure, again, that the catheter 
is sitting against the distal third of the rectum. And then you can easily attach it to the leg or to uh, the lower abdomen, whichever is more comfortable for the patient. Okay, so administering medications using the liquid pill. Uh, again, this is our system that we uh, developed uh, out of a need to make sure that we were really providing absolutely everything uh, in the kit for medication administration. This is the grinder. So again, this is a pill grinder uh, modeled off of a pepper grinder. You insert medication into the top here and then grind it up. And then these are water receptacles that you can then use to actually mix the water uh, with the medication. And with that, I'm going to stop here and I'll actually uh, show you on video because it's a little bit easier to just demo it for you. So hopefully you can all see me. Um, this is our liquid pill system. And again, uh, here you can see there's two openings. Hopefully you can see that at the top of uh, the grinder. And you simply take your pill and then you move it back and forth. And then once the uh, pill has been crushed, you will see that there's a, and again, I'm, I know this is on video, so it's hard to see, but it uh, is crushed into a very fine powder here. Simply then, you take the receptacle top, and I'm going to pull up 10 ml of water, and I simply just added 10 ml of tap water uh, before the webinar today into the water receptacle. I then take that crushed medication and insert it, or excuse me, the water and insert it into the crushed medication and shake and swirl for about 10 seconds, which when you're on video seems like quite a long time, but I, I promise you it's not that long when you're doing it in person. So once you have um, completely mixed up the medication, you then pull it back. And as you can see here, it's in solution form, and then you're ready to give it uh, via the Macy catheter. And you would simply just, um, excuse me, you would simply put the um, syringe on the medication administration port, as you see here, and then inject it over three to five seconds. Following that, you uh, just do a quick flush. We include a 3ml uh, enteral syringe also in the kit, and you'll want to do a, a, a quick flush. Uh, using that 3 ml enteral syringe with just tap water uh, following every medication administration and that makes sure that all the medication gets through the catheter. The catheter itself holds just under 3 ml which is why it's really important anytime that we give uh, medication through the catheter that you uh, follow it with that quick flush. So with that said I'm going to uh, go back to our PowerPoint here Okay, so some common care and troubleshooting. Um, and again, so after you um, have placed the catheter, these are common questions that we get asked and uh, just wanted to review today on the call. Um, you can absolutely do routine pericare with the Macy catheter in, in place. Um, and that is um, just per your uh, policy or your agency's protocol. Uh, we'll frequently get asked, you know, it, what happens, you know, if there's leakage from the medication administration port. If that were to ever happen, that just means that one-way valve um, might be stuck open and that will happen if there's not enough water mixed with the, the medication. So just make sure that you repeat a quick 3 ml uh, quick flush and we recommend just doing that quick flush over less than one second to make sure that all that medication gets through the medication administration port. The last question that we get um, and it's becoming fewer and fewer but we've received a few calls uh, where clinicians have said you know there I have the catheter in place I've checked placement but it seems like there's medication leaking out of the rectum around the balloon. Occasionally in the patients that we take care of at end of life, they might have an issue with the rectal tone. If that's the case, um, after ensuring that the Macy catheter is properly placed uh, in accordance with the placement marker line, so that straight line is sitting just outside the rectum, you'll want to make sure um, that you, the balloon is inflated to 15 ml. If it is and it still seems like it's not being held in place, uh, it's completely okay to add a few more ml. Uh, we teach that the balloon should be inflated to 15 ml, but it has been tested for safety up to 30. So if you need to add a few more, um, that, that's absolutely okay. Okay, and finally, just wanna share as we're wrapping up some Macy catheter education resources that we have available. 
uh, we have a couple um, pieces that we developed to help aid in the conversation with families and caregivers. And, just, and they cover important points um, that you want to be able to share. So obviously, you know, medications have been given rectally for centuries. However, this is a new way of giving medications through the, the Macy catheter. Uh, so we have a brochure if you're interested, um, or if you need more of a supply, please reach out to us and we'll get you uh, as many as you need. But we have brochures that you can hand to families. And these just cover really important talking points, uh, emphasizing again that you know, this is a discreet and easy device. As you can see here in this picture, the clinician or the caregiver only needs to access the patient's leg or lower abdomen once the catheter is placed. So unlike a suppository, you're not having to roll the patient regularly every time that you're giving that medication. Again, that it's comfortable. Um, the feedback that we get from uh, the clinicians that have placed the catheters is that if we have an alert, alert and awake patient, Frequently, they don't even realize when the catheter has been placed. Um, one of the studies that I referenced earlier in the um, presentation was uh, a pharmacokinetic study where uh, phenobarbital was given in a micro enema via the Macy catheter, and it was compared to um, a phenobarbital suppository. And one of the factors that we looked at actually in that study was comfort. And uh, the participants in the study rated the catheter much more comfortable than the suppository itself. So rest assured and feel comfortable sharing that, you know, once it's placed, um, it is a very comfortable device. And then, you know, again, it facilitates the rapid relief of symptoms. So the majority of feedback that we hear is that symptoms are managed very quickly and effectively within 15 to 20 minutes for the most part. Right, um, wanted to share, uh, we recently redid our website. So if you haven't had an opportunity, please visit the website and look at some of the new tools that we have available. Uh, one of the areas I'm really excited about are the, the training materials. So if you go on uh, MacyCatheter.com and head to our clinical corner, um, you will see that we have instructional videos and support videos available for you anytime. Um, one in particular, so outside of the instructional videos of how to use the catheter, how to use the liquid pill, um, we have what's called the caregiver video. We developed this as a tool to help start the conversation. So with families, excuse me, when you're introducing the, the catheter itself, um, it's a fantastic tool to be able to start that conversation. Um, it has a nurse explaining to the family what the Macy catheter is and how it can be utilized to help manage symptoms in the setting of their choice, whether it's the home in this setting or if a patient uh, were in an ITU setting. So I encourage uh, you to check all of those out if you need access to those or if I can send you any links. Please do not hesitate uh, to reach out. On our website as well, we have some of the common uh, facts and questions that are um, Ask, or that are asked to the team. So you have those available for you and we'll be loading all of our publications as well as some additional uh, training material there uh, in the next couple of weeks. So with that said, I will pause. Um, it doesn't look like any questions have been submitted at this point. So if you have any um, that have come up while I've been presenting, go ahead and click on that Q&A button. Feel free to submit those. Um, and if you don't have time today, completely okay. Uh, feel free to submit those by email as well. Uh, before we wrap up, we just want to share a little bit about some additional programs that we have to offer. Um, and these will all, again, be uh, available on our website, um, but we have what's called the Macy Catheter Super User Program. So if you're interested in being an internal education or peer resource uh, for your agency, let us know. We would love to sign you up for a super user program, which um, we offer regular webinars and touch points with different agencies uh, uh, across the country, all very optional, nothing is mandatory, um, but it's just an additional level of support that you can provide for uh, your agency, and I'd be happy to share some additional information on that program as well. And then we have our, our webinar series. So similar to this, we'll be offering a refresher training about once a month, uh, and then we're going to be offering an influencer series, which we're very, very excited about. Last week, we were honored to host Barbara Carnes, uh, who many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the Hospice Little Blue Book. Um, she talked about um, taking care of the professional giver, excuse me, taking care of the professional caregiver in honor of hospice 
and Palliative Care Awareness Month. So we have that um, on demand on our website. Many agencies listen to that as a lunch and learn uh, and uh, broadcast that to their teams as a thank you. So please feel free to, to utilize that if that'd be helpful. And you know, we're, we're always open to suggestions and ideas. If there's a speaker that you'd like to hear uh, that's a thought leader in the industry, let us know. Uh, Patty Moore, if anyone's familiar with Patty, she will be presenting for us in uh, January and we'll be sharing that uh, date here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We do have ongoing support, so please feel free. You, if you're taking care of a patient, something comes up in the middle of the night, 24 hours, and um, this is staffed by uh, the, the nurses on the team, and we're happy to talk to you 24 hours a day. Um, or you can email info at hospicorp.com. Again, um, this is our, our website, macycatheter.com. Feel free to check us out for the latest in training videos, publications, uh, blog posts that are coming. Uh, and some additional training tools that will be up there and announcements. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over and see if anyone has any questions. Again, if you do, please feel free to submit those um, by hitting the Q&A button um, at the top or uh, lower part of your screen. And I'll wait for just a few minutes um, and We'll see if anything comes in. Otherwise, um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an honor to have you all here. And uh, please, you know, feel free to join uh, Refresher Trainings or have any new nurse nurses that are joining your organization jump on. Uh, we will have this webinar available on our website as a quick resource, uh, uh, hopefully um, by the end of the week. Uh, so feel free to share that as well. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time and I uh, look forward to uh, having you all on our next webinar as well. Thanks so much.